Good afternoon, my name is Bo Reed. I own Papa Chops Rod and Real Repair and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Bass Pro Shops for giving me the opportunity to come present my business, my service and, and for, to you guys and uh, go over a little bit of uh, in-depth um, preventive maintenance cleaning um, on the uh, Johnny Morris JCL 10 HB. It's a uh, 5.8 ounce reel it's got strong side plates. It's the actual uh, frame is a lightweight, one-piece machined um, aircraft-grade aluminum. The uh, the reel's got carbon fiber drag discs. Uh, just it, it's got some really great, re really great aspects in such a such an at such an affordable price point. Um, it's got nine bearings throughout it. It's um, the gears are actually hardened aluminum um, for strength and durability. The uh, the um, li actual line guide right there that drives back and forth is actually titanium nitride, which uh, essentially allows your line, as it leaves your spool, to pass through that line guide in a much more efficient manner. Um, it's actually really, really nice. I've been using this reel for about the last month and a half, and it's really, really, really nice. It comes in a nice, small 50 or 100 series size package. It's light. Uh, it's got great stopping power. It's got a dual braking system, which they have basically put two different braking systems into one reel. They've put a centrifugal braking system and a magnetic braking system. So you can really fine tune these reels really, really well. So we're going to get into this and just cover a short period of preventive maintenance in a slightly more in-depth manner than, you've, than you're probably used to. So typically over the past, you know, customers and anglers alike, they... Uh, they just flood, they just, you know, to clean their reels, they'll hit it with a little bit of oil now and then. They'll, they'll flush it out after, you know, a, a good hard usage or they've been to the salt water or something like that. But um, today I'm going to show you how to just take it apart at the most simplest level that I think I would allow my customers to break it down to, to do their own preventive maintenance. And by doing that, essentially, they're getting more out of their money. They're getting, they're getting exactly what they, they've, they've paid for. They're doing their own preventive maintenance. And essentially, that eliminates the amount of time that they have to actually bring their reels in for an in-depth cleaning to somebody like me. So for the average consumer, I wouldn't suggest taking this entire reel completely apart. I would leave it to a professional to do that. All right, but what I'm going to cover now is about the about the extent that I would allow my customers to take their own reels apart to do their own preventive maintenance. So first off, we're going to start out by essentially to pull to do your preventive maintenance, you're always going to remove that left-hand side plate or that right-hand side plate so you could pull the spool out. All right, once you get that spool out and secured properly and you've got that left-hand side plate off, what we're going to do is start from the handle and work our way down. So right off the bat we're going to remove that handle nut retainer screw. Place it right there and what I like to do is then remove that handle retainer nut I guess you would say and um, everything that I everything that I take off alright I'm putting down in the same order on the table in front of me that I, in which I'm taking it off the spool and I'm taking it off one piece at a time always maintaining always making sure that I'm maintaining pressure on the part below the piece I'm working off alright so you can if you've got a, a little bit of mechanical skills you, you I believe the average consumer can actually do some pretty in-depth preventive maintenance on these reels um, essentially all we've done so far is remove the handle and now we're, we're uh, Pulling this star drag off, this is what you turn to apply pressure, uh, drag pressure. Below that, you've got a stack of drag, 
drag washers and keepers, you know, keep those all in the same order that you've taken them off. Um, you're going to pull off your uh, cast control cap. Alright, now this is where we're left at. Alright, all we've got is an exposed crankshaft. The Anna reverse sleeve is still in there, and we're basically down to the side plate. Alright, so right now we're just going to remove the side plate. That'll, that'll remove the, the anti-reverse sleeve and everything you need to expose the, in, the inside of this reel. You've got one screw out here on the front. You can take that apart or take that out. And it, when you start taking this side plate off, it's, it's actually spring-loaded. So make sure you're always holding pressure and keeping this side plate in place until you get all the screws out and then you can slowly work this thing off here. So we've got one more screw up here by the front in front of the worm shaft and I lay these out in the same manner that they're actually laid out on the reel. So this JCL 10HB actually has three total screws two that hold it to the main frame and then one that holds it to the main frame from the outside and so as you can see I'm sitting here still holding pressure on that side plate because it, like I said it's spring loaded so I've got all the screws removed and sitting in the same base positions that they were sitting as they were would be sitting right inside of the reel. Alright, so I'm holding it. Now I'm just going to slightly work that off. And as you work that off, more than likely, the Anna Reverse roller bearing clutch sleeve is going to pull out, pull off with it. So you just want to reach in there and pull this little sleeve out and set it right down behind your drag springs and your drag washers and your uh, the, the keepers along with that stuff. So now We've got the side plate off, sit that there right next to the screws, and essentially this is where you're at, okay? You've exposed the insides of the reel, you've exposed the main gears, the drag system, the pinion gear, and the yoke springs, and the yoke. So from right here, you just do the same thing, okay? You can pull, you can grab this main drive gear and pull that and all the drag discs off with it. Lay that down keep them in the same order so you don't forget alright below that you've got a, one more drag and then an anti-reverse ratchet okay so you basically with the removal of the pinion gear and the yoke and the yoke springs you have just gotten this reel down to where I recommend that you get it down to for your preventive maintenance needs there's a lot of other parts in here. There's parts that can be broke. There's parts that can go bad. If you get to where you need to go beyond this point, I highly recommend contacting a, serv a real service provider. Um, it gets kind of complicated from right here. So, I would, don't, like I said, don't go any further. Just stay right here. Clean as much of this as you can without having to remove the, the kick lever, the crankshaft itself, the yoke, you know, all this, all these, all these, all these internal parts that are actually secured to the main frame, I would refrain from uh, removing. Um, so there we are. From there, do what you need to do to get it clean. Use some, you, you're going to be using a, uh, <laughs> A lot of a lot of Q-tips. Uh, each reel, I guess you could probably sit, expect to spend one to two hours on. At my business, I in my business at Papa Chops Rod and Reel Repair, I allot for an hour and a half for each reel. Uh, I clean every one of them by hand um, with my own solutions, my own cleaning methods, my own lubing methods, um, and they come out great. So. Depending on the amount of usage of your reel and how you're using it depends on how, how often you need to clean it. Um, at the very least, you know, get it in and get it, slap a $20 cleaning on it 
wherever you're at in the country every three months you know every six months if you hardly ever use it but also keep in mind that if you do use these reels then you then you put them up for six months or three months there's a higher chance that your bearings and things like that can rust out and seize up if you've been you know if you've been you know doing business at the golf um, you know your reels are very susceptible to that so sometimes the 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 time that your reel spends dormant between usage can also be a major killer on your reel. It, it'll take that time to dry out, rust up, corrode, and seize together. And when, when parts start seizing together, that's when it gets really expensive to replace, to refurbish a reel. So once you've gotten to this point, stop. If you gotta go past here, get it to a professional, all right? I'd like to thank you for this time. Uh, you know, I'm going to get this thing back together and uh, start all over again. We'll see you. So on the last note, um, for the Johnny Morris JCL series, the 10 series, um, I've person personally confirmed the uh, ability to upgrade their, those bearings to a, to a faster ABEX 7 Boca bearing. Um, these bearings are great. They're super fast. Um, they're bound, as, depending on your casting technique, they are bound to add 15% distance onto every one of your casts. Um, so check them out. If you want to buy this reel, I think it's at a normal price around 120. I think it's on sale right now at, uh, for a hundred bucks. Um, a hundred bucks plus forty-eight dollars worth of bearings, 150 bucks. You'll have one of the fastest. Uh, fastest reels on the market um, at a very minimal price I mean this after that upgrade it'll cast better than um, reels that are running $250, $300, uh, so give us a call Papa Chops Rod and Reel Repair right here in Austin, Texas at 512-294-3155 and you can always find us online at papachopsrodandreelrepair.com take care guys thank you Bass Pro Shop